Hey everyone, how are you doing on this wonderful Sunday? I had a question here from Brittany. In fact, it's actually a lot of questions. So I thought I would go live and answer her questions. And I think there's going to be probably something that she asked that will probably answer something for you as well. So let me go ahead and answer that question. I'm actually just gonna pull up another window. Um, bum, bum, bum. Just so that I can see your comments because sometimes Facebook does not like to show me your comments as you guys are rolling in. So if you have any questions, please let me know by leaving me a question or comment below. Um, but meantime, let me read to you what she posted here so that I can answer her. And let me also tag her so she can get her answer. Oh, Brittany. There's so many different ways to spell Brittany. All right, so there's a lot of stuff here that you guys will like to uh, learn about. So let's see, we hit a lot of different things. So Brittany says, first of all, thanks for the ad and for creating and maintaining this group and the learning center. I look forward to using, utilizing all of it to educate myself on safely utilizing essential oils. I am brand new to essential oils and find myself very overwhelmed by all the information and options of blends and benefits and types. I can understand why. I'm severely ADD and currently unmedicated and hoping to get a little direction to get me started while I continue to use this group and the learning center to broaden my understanding of all the ins and outs of essential oils. I just received my first nebulizing diffuser and I want to safely diffuse with a large breed dog, two cats, two toddlers, and a very large open plan living space. While I build my stash, I am wondering if anyone has a list of essential oils that are safe around the aforementioned human and fur babies together that you would consider must-haves for basic minimalist stash. I do occasionally make my own lotion and eventually want to get into making my own shower oils, husband's beard oils, soaps, etc., and will eventually get into topical use, but I am also trying to keep things as simple as possible and not accumulate unnecessary things. I am a striving minimalist because clutter and too much around increases my anxiety. My husband and I both suffer from ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and I have very mild asthma, but severe pollen related allergies. Kiddos don't have any medical issues, but one is showing signs of anxiousness, hyperactivity, and both fight sleep. So these are the main things that I would like to start working on with essential oils. Hubs has always been very skeptical, skeptical of all the natural shifts I have been making to have a plastic-free, low-waste home, but he is actually excited about our new diffuser, and I would like to give him more options of what to diffuse in it, but not break the bank on starting our minimalist stash either. So, what are your top 12 or so individual essential oils that are a must for a minimalist stash that are safe to diffuse around cats, a dog, and toddlers? In a large, well-ventilated living space, animals do have the ability to escape from the room if they need to. So there were a lot of questions there and a lot of things that I want to address and answer. So first of all, you have come to the right place because this group is all about using essential oils safely and I'm a certified clinical aromatherapist. So if we haven't met yet, if you have no idea who I am, um, I created this group several years ago, um, my website using eussafely.com and my new one leahjacobson.com is it, the whole purpose is to answer your question. So I'm glad you asked me so that I can answer those for you. I am glad you are a member of the Learning Center because that is our new space to hang since um, Facebook doesn't like me posting a lot of the pros about essential oils, using medical terms and talking about viruses and all of this. They've actually flagged some of my posts that were public on my website. So I have used the Learning Center as a way to have a free membership so that you guys can access and have all of the information you need to, but it keeps out the Facebook robots and they're not flagging my posts anymore based on what I have on my website. So I'm glad you're in there. There'll be a lot more information coming, but it looks like Brittany, you could do also with access to our EO recipes club as well. Now there is a free level to the EO Recipes Club and you can access some of that information for free, including 
um, a diffuser recipe for anxiety and a lot of other things. So I would also suggest that you enroll over there too. So I'm gonna actually add the link to that. So that would be where I would point you next since you have so many questions about the usage of essential oils. Um, but let me kind of like go through starting from the top um, and help to answer some of your, your questions. So first of all, you are, over, you are overwhelmed by information and options of blends and benefits. So I get that. There's a lot of information out there and a lot of the information that you will find out there, especially a lot of the free information on Pinterest and other places is going to be from companies selling you essential oils. So there's going to be a lot of use this essential oil for all of these different ways and that may not actually be effective or safe for you. So coming to a group like this where I am not affiliated with brands, I do not sell essential oils, my main goal is to educate is a great start. Um, as for brands, I do have information in the Learning Center, which you mentioned that you are in. So if you click on the, the Brands tab, it will actually give you more information about brands as well. Um, as for blends, I also have a free access level to our essential oil blends safety files. And what that does is it actually assesses the blends for you. So I'm also going to give you a link to our essential oil singles, which is the safety files and which has the safety information for 240 plus different essential oils. So you can absolutely go through um, using this resource and look up the different um, safety based on the essential oils in your blend. So if you flip over the blend, if it has it on the back or if you go to their website, whichever brand you are using, and you look at the individual essential oils and you, and you look at the safety of those, then you can come to a determination on the safety of the blend. So what I do um, in the essential oil blend safety files is I'm actually doing that work for you. I've gone and I've looked up the individual safety for those individual essential oils and come up with the assessment for the blend as a whole. So what that means is if there is a single essential oil that is in a blend that is not safe for pregnancy, the whole blend is not safe for pregnancy because when you are using that blend, that contains that essential oil or essential oils that are not safe for pregnancy and you're pregnant, you are putting yourself at risk. So there's two options for you when assessing the different blends that you should use and the safety thereof. So there is that safety aspect if that blend is safe for you. And then there is the aspect of, is it going to be effective? Because as I've gone through almost 400 single blends now and added those to the safety files, I've noticed a lot of companies do not know how to properly formulate blends. It seems like they're going randomly into their warehouse and just pulling random bottles off the shelf because I'm seeing blends that are supposed to be for energy that have sedatives in them and vice versa. So you wanna make sure that the blends you are using are going to be safe and they are going to be effective. Um, as for ADD and ADHD, I do have information in the Essential Oil Recipes Club. Now, you have access to the intro information for all of the recipes over there. There is not a free recipe for the ADD or ADHD blends, but you can come up with some different things to look out for and do based on the intro post that does have some free information in there for you. Um, as always, if you have any questions about anything, posts like you are doing um, and posting over in the learning center in those specific areas is going to get your question actually answered a lot more quickly probably than posting in this group especially on the weekend since I get an email immediately so that when I'm on my computer in my office and I'm able to answer questions I can go through and very quickly um, give you answers to those questions that you have. Now you are asking about a nebulizing diffuser. So if this is the type of diffuser where you are screwing a bottle directly into the diffuser and that is going into your room at full concentration, that is something that I'm actually not going to recommend, especially with littles and especially with pets, but even just you yourself. That is too highly concentrated for you to be breathing. 
Um, if it is a nebulizing diffuser where you are able to actually add a few drops of essential oil to and then a bunch of water, um, some people call their nebulizing diffusers um, nebulizing when they are really a water-based diffuser and that is something um, that is safer. So I would have to take a look at the exact diffuser that you are using, but take a peek in the Learning Center under inhaling and take a look at the different descriptions of the different diffusers to decide which type that you have, but you can also add a link to the comments so that I can review that too as well um, to check the safety of that. Now, as far as essential oils that are going to be safe for dogs and cats and children, First of all, essential oils, unfortunately, are not safe to use with cats. They simply lack the enzyme required to metabolize the essential oils. So you can find that information in the pets tab over in the learning center. Um, and for those of you who are watching that aren't um, yet a member of the learning center, I just dropped a link where you can sign up. If you are already a member, then just go ahead and check out the um, link to our library and then you can just click access now to the Learning Center and you just have to log in and access that information if you are already a member. But you can click pets in the tab um, and that will give you information on the safety of information uh, of the safety of essential oils for dogs because there are lots of essential oils that are safe for dogs and there are lots of essential oils that are safe for both dogs as well as children. Um, it's not always easy for me to just recommend a bunch of essential oils that are safe for both. Um, I mean, I can absolutely do that, but it's really best to determine what you are wi willing or wishing to address. So if you want to address focus, that would be like fur needle and lime. If you want to address anxiety, that could be bergamot and sweet orange and maybe cedar wood. I mean, it, it totally depends on the situation. So I hesitate, although I'm able to, and I've kind of done a top five and top 10 before, um, I really prefer to know what you want to use the essential oils for before giving you a list of essential oils to use because that list may change depending on your specific needs. Um, and if you ever need a reference, like I mentioned, you can, there's a free level for the single safety files. There's a free level for the essential oil profiles and the difference between the two, um, the profiles has the safety and the benefits of essential oils, whereas the safety files is just safety files. Um, this one has 60 essential oils. This one has 240, but there are free levels for both of these books. There's online versions that you have the free level for, then there's ebook and then there's print books as well. Um, so that you can actually go through and look up the essential oils that you already have, and then you can note accordingly which ones are safe for your pets and which ones are safe for your children as well. Um, let me see what else you are looking. See, you are looking to create your own recipes, lotions, shower oils, etc. So I highly suggest taking a peek at the EO Recipes Club. Um, there is a free level. There's also a paid level. You can access as a member all of the recipes. And then there is a VIP level where you can access recipes, plus you can actually access a ton of essential oil classes taken directly from our basics course. And you have access to, I think we're on module three right now, we're getting to the end of module three on inhalation, lots of questions answered. Actually had a lady um, sign up yesterday and then she was PMing me, asking me a bunch of questions about, you know, how do essential oils work and what about inhalation and all of this? And I'm like, you know, you are a member of the recipes club, but did you know that there's a VIP level as well? And that actually gives you, um, opens up a whole new world of information for you. You not only get access to me being able to create custom recipes for you, um, as well as of course seeing all of the recipes that we have already available, but you also have access to all of those classes as well, which is a couple hundred dollar value, those classes directly from the basics course. Um, so I highly recommend looking into that to see if that's something that would be something that you could actually use. Um, so I think I kind of grabbed most of what you were asking me. I'm just checking to make sure. But yeah, a diffuser is a great way to introduce essential oils and really um, bring a mood to a room that can actually be effective for focus and for calming as well. 
So, um, oh, you're here, Brittany. Oh, that is so cool. I am so excited. You are here and I'm answering your question. Um, my nebulizer is the type that you add only drops of essential oils to a glass reservoir and it diffuses for two minutes, then turns off for two or three minutes and does this intermittently, diffusing for two hours before turning off automatically. I'll try and add a link in a few. Okay. Yeah. So that's the diffuser that can be extremely overwhelming. Um, I highly recommend grabbing a diffuser that uses water with a few drops of essential oils instead, because diffusing pure essential oils into the air sounds great, but it actually is super, super concentrated and it's going to be too much. It's going to be too overwhelming. You are going to open yourself up for headaches, feeling nauseous, um, possible allergy-like symptoms just from it being too intense. It's going to be too intense. Um, turning on for two minutes is perfect. Um, for a regular water-based diffuser, but shutting off for two or three minutes honestly really isn't enough of a break. Um, you only need five to 10 drops of essential oil in your regular water-based diffuser that can diffuse for, you know, 10 or more hours. Um, so that's going to be overkill. If you use that, you are probably going to end up with um, adverse reactions from inhaling too strongly. It's just going to be too intense for you. Um, if it's not possible to add water to that type of diffuser, I would suggest looking into one that does. And I'll add a link to um, the one that I recommend. This is a water-based diffuser, so you are adding a few drops of essential oil to the water and that's diffusing 10 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and it can go intermittently for I believe up to about 24 hours or at least 10 or 12. It's, it's a very, very long time and that doesn't overdo it for you. That's like the perfect amount of diffusing to do. Um, so while you're on here, Brittany, I'm not sure how much of my live you caught, but I did try to answer all the questions that I could for you. And also, I don't know if you see any links, but that's links to more information for you based on the questions that you had. But just overall, um, a few essential oils that most people can actually take advantage of having are going to be tea tree and lemon essential oils, both of which are safe for dogs and kids. They're both safe for pregnancy, um, no drug interactions, nothing like that. So tea tree and lemon are amazing for cleansing the air, for cleansing surfaces. So you can use it in cleaning sprays. You can diffuse it to kill airborne germs. They're absolutely amazing for any sort of germ killing situation. Um, you mentioned you had children. I would highly suggest Helichrysum essential oil, which is great for all sorts of topical skin issues, bumps, scrapes, bruises, anything like, you know, scars, anything like that. Um, another essential oil I would recommend for calming would be bergamot essential oil, sweet orange essential oil. Those can be great for calming. Um, for sleep, I would recommend cedarwood, sandalwood. Um, those are great essential oils for sleep issues. Um, and in my EO recipes club, even on the free level, I do have a link to a linen spray recipe for sleep. So click sleep in the menu and then you will find the linen spray recipe there. Um, other essential oils that are good to have on hand would be fur needle. That would be great to mix with sweet orange and that's great for respiratory issues. For emotional issues, geranium, clary sage are both great to have on hand. And I believe um, fur needle isn't safe for dogs, but I believe the other ones that I mentioned are safe for kids and dogs um, other than the fur needle. But hey, instead of diffusing in your house, what you can do is you can either wear an aroma pendant like this one for yourself, or you can use a personal inhaler. So these things are awesome because you can actually add essential oils directly to the wick and then you can breathe through the holes in the top. And this is perfect for when you simply want to inhale for yourself um, and you don't want to expose your kids to them in case they're not safe for kids or you want to pass it around your kids and not expose your dog um, or your cat or whatever. So these are great personal inhalers. These are great tools to have for inhaling. And you can find more information in the Learning Center under the Inhaling tab and then click on Personal Inhaler and you can find more information there as well as a link and how to use them and all of that. Um, is halicrysum good for acne? It can be great for acne for the healing part. Um, for acne, I would recommend witch hazel. Witch hazel would be amazing. It's an astringent, it's a cleanser, so it's great for cleaning up any extra oils. 
Um, tea tree is great for the bacterial aspect and helichrysum can come in on the healing aspect. Um, thanks for addressing all of my many questions. You are welcome. I've been trying to steer clear of water-based ones because we have humidity issues right now with our house and get mold very easily due to how well our house is sealed up. Gotcha. Um, and I have a hard time finding plastic-free options outside of the nebulizer I already have. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, are you going to ruin it if you add water to it? But then that defeats the whole purpose of you're trying to eliminate water from the air. Um, great question. I don't know. Um, you could put a couple of drops of essential oil on a cotton ball. You can add a couple of drops to a stone, like an aroma stone. You can add um, a couple of drops to um, some resin. If you have any frankincense resin or myrrh resin, you can add some drops of essential oil. I actually have a box right back there that is filled with um, frankincense and myrrh resin. And I just dripped some essential oils on that. So you can come up with other ways of adding a few drops of essential oil into the air without actually putting them out into that full concentration. That's also going to be extremely expensive too. Two minutes of an essential oil being put into the air, you are going to go through your bottles very, very quickly um, as well. So yeah, so you can do that. I mean, you can just drip a couple of drops on, on something and, and have them diffuse into the air that way. Or again, put 15 drops of essential oil in a personal inhaler and you can actually use these for weeks, if not months, even with daily use. So that's what I would highly recommend doing. So I'm glad I answered the questions for you. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave comments in this video or go ahead over to the Learning Center. And as you are looking through that information, just go ahead and leave me a comment over there um, and I can address you there as well. Um, I hope other people that were watching too had some questions answered as well. That is what we are here for. Um, I'm glad I was able to come live today and answer questions for you guys. This is so wiggly. I was trying to fix it and it wasn't fixing it and it doesn't help when I'm hitting things too. So I need to stop using my hands. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.